A leather belt is one of the essential items in a man's wardrobe. You could easily buy a $20 belt from a shop that's made from low quality materials, low quality leather, if not any leather, and made overseas. Instead of giving your money to another corporation, I'm going to teach you how to make a high quality leather belt that fits your exact waist measurement. Let's begin this video. These are the tools you'll need to make a leather belt. You can pause this video to read the tools. As this belt is going to be unlined, I recommend vegetable tan leather. Do not use chrome tan leather for an unlined belt as this will stretch. For vegetable tan leather, you can use a standard piece or bridle, harness leather or skirting leather. These leathers are finished differently for extra strength and durability depending on their uses. As the belt is unlined, we need a good amount of thickness. These are the thicknesses I would recommend. The area I recommend buying the leather is from the side or butt slash bend. You can buy either individual straps from suppliers, so don't worry about buying a full side or butt. In terms of belt width, here is a good guide for you. For men, the wider the belt, the more casual, and the thinner the belt, the more formal. For women, there is a wider variety and you can go thinner to 25 millimeters or less. 32 millimeters would be the maximum for more casual, for the buckle, I'll be using a 38mm brass buckle, and this buckle is from England as I like the quality of these buckles. Buckles can come in a range of options from brass, nickel plated, which is brass that is nickel plated, gold plated, stainless steel, antique, black, and more. In terms of matching buckles to leather, here is a guide for men and women. Again, you can pause this video here. With that, you can decide what leather and buckle you want to use. I'd recommend using for gold a brass buckle, or for silver and nickel plated or stainless steel. For this project, I'll be using Chicago screws. For this, it's completely up to you if you want to stitch, if you want to use rivets, but for this video, I want to be using Chicago screws. For the Chicago screws, you want to make sure that the post is lower than the total thickness when the buckle turn is folded over. So whatever the total thickness of both pieces of leather, make sure that the post is smaller. This is what I'll be using. You can pause this video here. Now with all that information, let's begin this project. We'll start by cutting the strap. You can use a strap cutter, plow gauge, long rulers, or a template. We're then going to fold both pieces of the strap. Whichever side is creased when folded is the end we'll use for the buckle. The other end will be better for the holes as it's firmer. Next, we'll punch out the pattern holes. For this, I'll be using an oblong punch. I'll be using a six millimeter diameter hole punch to punch out these holes. Next, we'll be beveling the edges with a size 3 edge beveler. A size 3 takes a nice amount off for a nice rounded fill that will be comfortable around your waist. Depending on your size will depend how far you'll need to bevel. To find your size, the best option is by measuring a belt you currently use. Measure from the top of the buckle to the hole that you currently use. We're going to get a rough gauge so you don't need to bevel and burnish extra edges. What we'll do is we'll place the buckle in the middle of the oblong hole, then measure to our size. Next, we'll go some inches past the end of the pattern and cut the leather. Here, we're not aiming for our exact measurements. We'll do this when the buckle is attached. What we can do now is bevel all the way around the belt. Then we'll burnish the edges. I'll be using edge stain, token oil, and finish it with beeswax. The benefits of beeswax is it naturally seals the edge and is durable for outdoor use. Once that's finished, we'll cut out the keeper. Next, we'll get the keeper and place it around two pieces of leather, as this is what it will be like when the leather is passed through it. We want the edges to touch, then remove the excess, and then bevel it with a size zero edge beveler. I like this as it takes a slight edge off. It's up to you if you want to use the size 3 here, then burnish as we did before. To keep the keeper together, you can use keeper staples, and since I don't have these, I'll be using my pricking irons and cross the stitch over to get the pieces together. I'll be using a running stitch for this. You only need one needle for this. Simply tie a knot at the end and pass the thread through. Don't worry too much how the stitch looks, just make sure the pieces are together. Next, we'll fold the buckle turn over and screw in the Chicago screws. Then attach the keeper and screw in the Chicago screws. Now we can get the exact measurements by measuring from the top of the buckle to the measurements that we found out before 
when measuring the belt that we use. Then we can use the pattern and make the holes. Then we can use our end punch at the end or use our utility knife. I like to use oval holes as oval holes won't stretch unlike round holes. And I like the aesthetics compared to round holes. Then bevel and burnish and that's it. And with that, you have a high quality leather belt. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and subscribe and don't forget to enjoy your leather crafting.